previously on Minimal List. Then we pull out onto the River Weaver, and I give a quick toot on the horn to warn any boats that might be coming that we're entering the channel. We're going to turn right today and head downstream towards Runcorn. This isn't the end of the cruise, but we're going to end the vlog here as there's another four hours of cruising to document and the video would end up being way too long. Rivers have a very different feel to canals. There's obviously a current, and they tend to be much wider, and so you see much larger boats. There's a walking pad that runs along much of the Weaver, but as our boat is moving much faster than it would on a canal, it's not really practical for Joe and George to walk. Plus, it's not quite so easy to jump on and off the boat, as we need to wait for official moorings. The Enderton Boat Lift Visitor Center gave us an information booklet for the River Weaver, and it helpfully lists all the official moorings. These are the first ones at Barnton Cut. There are four sets of locks on the navigable River Weaver, and they are all operated by Canal and River Trust staff, but you do need to call ahead and let them know you're on your way so they can get the locks ready for you. That's some interesting mooring from the big old barge there. Luckily, there's enough room for us to squeeze past and into the lock. This is Saltersford Lock. It has actually been closed for quite a few months, and only opened again a week or so ago. We're quite grateful that we get to go through. The lock keeper gets a call from another boat that's on its way, so we wait for them to arrive before we descend. The lock is pretty gentle, and the lock keeper only asks us to tie off with the center line. He also kindly calls ahead to the next lock for us to let them know we're on our way. These locks are huge, so it isn't a big surprise to see this big old boat on the moorings when we leave the lock. These houses are on the outskirts of the village of Weaverham. I wonder how it got its name. In Acton Bridge, we pass under the massive and creatively named Acton Swing Bridge. As you can see, we will easily fit underneath it. There are some boaters' facilities and moorings here, as well as a busy pub. This is a pretty sad sight as we approach Dutton Lock.
These are some of the 20 arches of the Dutton Railway Viaduct. It was built in 1836 by George Stevenson, the famous railway engineer, and cost 54,400 pounds. Rather a bargain, I think. This is the Frodsham Cut, and you used to be able to moor down there, but sadly it is no longer navigable. This was the original route to the Mersey before the Manchester Ship Canal was built, and ships would wait here for the tide to be right. We are now passing the village of Sutton Weaver. After the swing bridge, there's a water point and other boat surfaces, but you would need to squeeze in front of this boat to make use of them. Sutton Weaver Railway Viaduct is constructed of a 92-foot cast iron span that is flanked by arched brick abutments. Here, traffic is carried over the Weaver by the M56. Here we pass some more visitor moorings and the Runcorn Rowing Club. At this point, the landscape starts to change rather dramatically as we pass two miles of continuous chemical works. Pipes and pressure vessels and all sorts of distillation stacks line the starboard bank of the river, and every so often there are squeaks and burps and bubbles and the continuous whistle of escaping steam. At least I hope it's just steam. We're now nearing the north end of the River Weaver navigation. You can't see it very clearly because we are now facing into the sun, but this is the marsh lock which leads down onto the Manchester Ship Canal, which runs alongside the River Mersey. This is the junction with the Weston Canal, which linked with the Runcorn and Weston Canal, where the navigation continued to the Runcorn Docks and the Bridgewater Canal a mile and a half east of here. Sadly, most of it was filled in in the 1960s. Ahead is White's Bridge, which marks as far as you can go on the Weaver navigation. Delamarsh Lock is to the left, but is no longer in use. We turn around, and of course, we have to back right up to the very end of the navigation, just to say we have. Then it's back past the hissing and burping and squeaking and whistling to hopefully find a more peaceful mooring that doesn't occasionally stink of sulfur. It's a little quieter by marsh lock, but the moorings are already taken.
take the last mooring next to the Runcorn Rowing Club, which is surprisingly peaceful considering we are sandwiched between the chemical works and the M56. Oh my goodness, it, the first half was just, well, the, well, the majority of it, right up to Runcorn. It was just beautiful, like... Oh yeah. Really remote, really green, just farmland, like no bridges, hardly. I mean, there was a couple, but... And most of them are these very large swing bridges. Miles between them, so there was no traffic. Oh, it was just, and there's no boats here either, like, yeah. well, we've seen the, a couple of boats. But, but not a huge number. But not really, I mean, we've... we've one narrow boat shared a lock and one little GRP shared the other lock. Um, but yeah, compared to the canal we just came off, it's just empty. So yeah. considering it's August. Yeah, yeah. But just so many nice views of, um, you know, cattle, sheep, horses, <laughs> beautiful stretching. Lots of different wildlife. Yeah. Like so many different birds that you don't usually see. The yeah. one that you mainly see on river. Oh, we're talking of wildlife. What's the animal we saw this morning? The ferrets. And we saw are a couple ferrets? of ferrets. Yeah. Ferrets or stoats? And there were stoats. Yeah. They're one of the two. We saw a stoat is a kind of ferret, I believe. Anyway, it was, it was very exciting to see them on the towpath today. And very dark. Yeah, they were dark. Then there were some really big cormorants. Yeah, on the like, river. I mean, they're the same cormorants we've seen before, but like there was one of them that was just enormous. Like that, that cormorant must have had some good fishing. We came out of the Anderton boat lift and we turned yeah. right, which meant we came north or down river. Right? Yeah. And um, so we had two locks to go through. We had Salsesford lock and then Dutton's lock. And you have to phone it ahead to let them know that you're coming, but it's all completely manned. So it's dead easy. And the lock keepers were super friendly. And so, yeah, you know, just, you. yeah, really, it was really nice. It was a really good experience. I don't know why more people don't do this. I could see doing this in the winter too. I could it's see. really nice. I, I mean, it's not see. scheduled, like the, the locks aren't open as much. But I could see just staying like going from one mooring to the next mooring to the next mooring like on the weaver yeah 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 like we've done it in we've done quite far in a day but you could take your time out for it you totally could i mean we're not really like in a rush it was just just the weather really yeah it's just because we've got seven days of rain in front of us and today's the only day that sort of obviously cleared up for a few hours so. so which is why we decided when we came out of Dutton's Lock to go all the way to the very north part that we could go to it wasn't clear on the map so I phoned Anderton Boatlift and said what is the furthest you can go she didn't have a clue <laughs> she, she kept contradicting herself and then she said you can't go on the Manchester Kip, ship canal because you need um, a pilot and I'm like yeah you need a pilot and you need to book to go through that lock i'm not asking to go on the manchester ship canal i just want to actually, you don't actually need a pilot no, on no. the manchester ship canal yeah, yeah. It, you um, do need a you need permission yeah. and you need a different um but anyway i was just like i just want to know how far we can go on the weaver so she she didn't know which was fine but she went to find out and we got told it was white's bridge and then there's a disused lock up there that leads onto the runcorn something canal runcorn western canal which is derelict yeah and then there's the basin which is owned by the chemical company ICI it's a shame that is derelict, derelict because then you could just loop around on a stream onto the Runcorn the Bridgewater Canal yeah it used to connect up to the Runcorn and then that'd be another massive loop so yeah. instead of people going down the end of the boat lift just to come up it'd be a big loop you could do yeah which would be kind of cool yeah so yeah so there's not that many moorings here but the ones they're like marked on the map that they give you. And this, we're on the one that's the furthest north um, at Runcorn Rowing Club. And then just further north of here is just, it's like, it's not pleasant, it's fascinating though. Yeah, the chemical plant. Yeah. Right? yeah. So this is Runcorn Rowing Club. There's about a half mile to the beginning of the chemical plant. And then it just is a continuous operation. It's massive. For probably about four miles. It's, yeah, I can't. All the way up to this White's Bridge. And then beyond that, that whole basin is is run by them. Really? And it's all been rebuilt to take like two, 2,500 ton ships and stuff. And I was looking at it because it's fascinating because there's all these pipes where for some reason they go over it, then they go up, then they yeah, go down, and they like go over it. And as far as I can tell, that must be because there's something that could, like something that would come out of solution or something. So you want, you know, you, or you, you, you need to keep pressure. I've and got no idea. And then there's all these weird, like, 
holding tanks and chimneys and brick buildings and yeah, skips. Yeah. And, and there's like clearly a lot of stuff that's sort of pressure vessels and distillery uh, yeah, portions. Yeah, it is fascinating. Like, yeah. Apparently there's a museum near here somewhere in, in Runcorn, I think, called Catalyst. That's like a museum slash interactive exhibit for the chemical industry. Yeah. And if I if I get a chance, I think it's up closer to the Trenton, or not oh, the, the Trenton Mersey, but the Bridgewater Canal. Yeah. If I get a chance, I'd like to sort of swing by that because just looking at this thing today, it's like, I got no, I mean, I got sort of a basic idea of what's going on in terms of their taking raw materials and turning them into industrial chemicals. So, you know, there's lots of like salts that are gonna be dissolved in water and they're going to be adding acids and, and and titrating off liquids and removing different salts and trying to make other salts and it's i think if you come this far it is worth just going those extra few miles just to just to see it and and to be nearly deafened by one of the valves yeah. that was just Open. shooting steam out and also there's a couple of places where it says if you see flashing lights toxic chemicals being loaded, loaded. Um, and, dead and slow. both Can't signs get... have half of the sign missing, so you need to have seen both in order to actually understand to what the, the whole together. message is. We're exhausted, nine and a half hours, yeah. longest day ever. So let's go eat one of these funny tortilla things we got. Yeah. So, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Comment down below. Also, subscribe if you want to hear more from us, and click the bell for notifications, even though apparently I don't need to say that anymore.